you're trying to meet needs, because they would use that same language in the for-profit sector, um, whether or not it's actually a need. Um, but, um, but how are they differing? It's, it's, the tendency has to be to try to approach those needs differently. But yeah, we've talked about that a lot in our courses, is how they're blending and overlapping, and the lines are getting blurred. So. So fundamentally, how is the community sector traditionally different from the business sector? One's for profit, the other is not for profit. Exactly. One's for profit, one's non-profit, right? Um, how would you say they're the same? Providing a service. Providing a service, yep. I think you said they're all going to provide a good service to the community. Right. Either. Yeah. Yeah. And the challenge is to think about different ways of blending and even the definition of a social enterprise does not specifically say uh, in most definitions that I've seen that you have to be a nonprofit to be a community oriented organization, right? That's where the term social enterprise has come from. So the idea, the definition of a social enterprise is that, yeah, you may make some money, and there's various different structures for doing that. Um, everything from a B Corp to a community benefits corporation, I think is the one we use in Nova Scotia that we have new legislation around, um, to you may be a nonprofit. A lot of cooperatives are social enterprises. They may or may not, as a cooperative, can you make money? Yep, so you can have a for-profit cooperative or a non-profit cooperative, right? And there's various structures within the cooperatives. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all blurring and blending. So given what we know of the non-profit community sector, what are some things we need to think about when we look to increase innovation in the sector? Yeah. Anybody else? We need, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, like, um, talking about having to do a business plan, and you were saying how they always are wanting more now, and there's only little people who can actually do it in the organization, so it's kind of about, like, taking the barriers and limits off of <clears throat> what traditionally is done and just giving people a space to actually be innovative. And if there wasn't so many, um, you know, like, demands that they could just, like, open up and, like, just try to think of something that's different. But it's probably not happening because they need all of these things done and it's kind of like putting them in a box and they're coming up with these traditional ideas that aren't really that innovative. Yeah, if you want to be truly innovative, you need time to think, to talk to other people. You need a diversity of perspectives, right? All, all different kinds of perspectives. Um, and, and you need collaboration, really. Um, those are some fundamental things that I think are important. Um, so, and you need to think, the trend is now, you need to think of your organization, even if it's a nonprofit organization, like it's a business. So what you're, the program you're in, and those of you who are taking some business courses, that's fantastic because you're building your capacity to think like a business even if you're a nonprofit. Because that is becoming more and more critical, and I'll speak to that more as we go along, and how that influences governance as well. 
So given what we just talked about, what then is really needed in the nonprofit community sector to support innovation? And what could get in the way of those support systems? Well, you were saying uh, to increase innovation, you need diversity. So you have to be accepting of the different diverse backgrounds that are coming to you in innovation. Not even just accepting, you have to actively recruit, well, that's true. right? You need to go out and say, hey, we want diversity we, of all sorts of perspectives. Um, and it's, diversity can be a tricky thing because it's not always visible, mm. right? So you, there is a process uh, through SEDNET. We have a matrix for board members, and we're thinking about doing it for members in some way. But we have a matrix for board members where you self-identify different things that, different, different perspectives that you can contribute. Uh, so that we have a sense on our board, at least, in our governance structure, that we are getting those different perspectives that we need. Um, anything else? Yep. Um, I think like from an HR perspective, it's about getting those right people, finding a way to retain them as well. So valuing 